This is the Supermicro GH200. Grace Hopper 200, yes. That's not what we're here to talk about today. We're here to talk about the storage and the evolution of storage. This is an E1.S drive. This is a Samsung PM9A3. There's eight of these E1 drives at the front of this machine. It's a density play, but the Solidime PS1010, well, it puts that 9A3 to shame, mainly because the 9A3 is a little bit of an older drive, but this technology is moving so quickly that yes, there is an air and a liquid cooled version of this E1 PS, V7 PS1010 from Solidime. 176 layers of V7 flash. There's a lot to talk about because I think technology here is gonna trickle down into the desktop and the performance in, uh, characteristics are really interesting, but also how we benchmark SSDs is changing. The, the entire standards body is adopting actual, reasonable, meaningful, not misleading benchmarks as standards because the AI demands it. If you have a, a drive that benchmarks really well but doesn't perform well, it's not gonna work well for the AI use case. And that means that we're gonna see a lot of truth in the industry, but let's, let's unpack. So Enterprise Flash typically is more of a U.2 form factor, at least right now. Two and a half inch drive, and the two and a half inch drive is a 30 year old plus standard, uh, probably more than 30 years. And this is cool and fun, but this doesn't really fit super conveniently in a 1U rack case. And 1U is where we're going because again, it's a density play. Everything has liquid cooling. And if everything has liquid cooling, why don't we evolve the storage to have liquid cooling? And that's really a large part of what these PS, the D7 PS1010 uh, is about from Solidime because we're evolving from the air-cooled version to the liquid-cooled version. Notice the air-cooled version has a built-in heatsink. The liquid-cooled version does not. We saw these at Supercompute 25 and the little carrier from Solidime as an example application where the cold plate will grab onto the drive. Now the interesting thing about the cold plate is that you can actually get sufficient cooling even from the short edge. So a cold plate could come down on the, on the on the short edge and provide enough cooling for these. But I think it's much more interesting what's happening under the hood to drive this kind of density because as the density goes up, the heat production and power budget tend to want to climb as well. And we are working with 176 layer flash. These are available up to 7.68 terabytes today. They're launching kind of today, although, you know, the enterprise scale GH200s, an important part of the architecture changes here that I think are going to tr trickle down to desktop users that are going to be useful is deliberate architectural changes to reduce latency. And one of the key reasons for that is because even though, yes, I mean, this, this is only eight bays for storage, you're going to need separate storage connected to your storage network in the giant AI factory of the future. But storage that's on this is also available across the whole fabric. Yeah, this thing's going to be connected at you know, 800 gigabit, 1.6 terabit, depending on the generation of, you know, module in your AI factory. And data on this may be needed by another GPU in an entirely other system. And so the latency for how quickly this responds matters a lot. And so that shows through in the benchmarks and how the drive performs and how it works and that sort of thing. Now the PS1010, the model itself, is not really a new model from Solidime, but it's the form factor and the cooling and everything else that goes into it. Let's Let's, let's go to the desk and talk about the performance and characteristics and how it stacks up in the modern enterprise SSD landscape. Now by switching to the liquid cooling cold plate, it's 9.5 millimeters versus 15 millimeters if you're gonna do the designed for air cooling version. And 15 millimeters is the standard that you'll see across a bunch of SSDs. Uh, there's a, there are a couple of weirdo SSDs out there like the Intel that uh, has a separate carrier for the heatsink. Um, for the 4500, but that is largely an obsolete design. These are PCIe Gen 5 SSDs. And in testing, I was a little surprised because you know we, we tested the PS1010 last year in the E3 format as opposed to the E3, e, E1 format that we have here. And things have improved since then. I mean, we're able to do 3.3 million IOPS. I was getting about 3.15 million IOPS on the E3 version of the 1010 or the U.2 version of the 1010, but the E1 version is actually a little bit faster. And that seems to be related to uh, firmware updates and everything else. This is 4K random, and that's Q depth 256, 4K random write, 
at Q depth 256 is up to 400,000 uh, IOPS, and our 128K sequential read uh, is 14,500, which is just a hair faster than the, the PS1010, and that is very near the PCIe Gen 5 limitation. So it's very nice to see that the drive will keep up. Now, this is not re really a review. Like, I tested this, and I'm doing some AI crazy stuff behind the scenes. Nobody wants to hear about that. The SSD performed really well. It performed two specifications. The PS1010 is not really super new, but it is a new form factor, and it is really exciting what Solidime is doing. But allow me to introduce you to Sina. 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 It is the standards organization. Because there are so many enterprises out there that are using these SSDs to the fullest extent possible, it is getting really hard for SSD manufacturers to fly under the radar um, with uh, funky things that they do in the firmware. But there's also a lot of really creativity, uh, really creative things that are happening in the firmware. Now, uh, at the same time, the march of technology means the controllers, that the computers that are living on these SSDs are evolving. And that gives you a lot more horsepower. And with a lot more horsepower, maybe there's a temptation to do things in the firmware that, you know, you play games with the benchmarks. Enter SP Random, a fast method to reduce random preconditioning time of SSDs from days to hours. SP Random, this is something you should look for in, in reviews of SSDs because it has to do with preconditioning the actual flash media. Our Solidime drives here, 176 layers, bleeding edge, it's awesome. When this media is brand new, it has absurdly low latency, and absurdly fast response time. Even if you've written to it one time, the time that it takes to read back what you've written to it is uh, measurably lower than what it is after the cell gets, you know, three or four or five cycles on it. And you can't write to the disk from beginning to end and then rewrite to the disk from beginning to end because the controller on the SSD is so smart that it is looking at what is changing on disk and how it's changing and the cell that you write to the second time is not necessarily physically the same cell as the first time. So SP Random, a fast method to reduce the random preconditioning of drive of SSDs from days to hours. There's This is an amazing presentation. That is what this is that I'm talking about. This is what you can watch to learn more about it or read about to learn more about it. But more importantly, this is from what has become basically the standards committee for SSD testing and, and how this evolves. So when I do my, my testing and my comparison against, you know, for this SSD and other SSDs, it is after having been subjected to this so that the performance characteristics will be uh, more normalized. Now in, in all reviews since time immemorial, everybody always does some type of preconditioning on the disks. And sometimes, you know, it just involves writing an absurd amount of information to the disk, like, with Anvil, as we have done in the past. But we won't have to do quite as much random writing, and sometimes it takes a very long time to do that, especially on larger drives. Um, in this case, uh, it doesn't take quite as long, and it works great on larger SSDs. It also works great as, you know, when we move to 32 and 64 and 128 and beyond terabyte drives for the the enterprise, the uh, things are managed internally on the drive, not in four kilobyte sizes, but in 64 or 128 kilobyte sizes. And that also changes the performance because to the operating system, it can be presented as, oh yeah, this is totally four kilobytes, when the reality is, no, it is not. And Solidime is not just packaging flash. They're doing the engineering here to connect the dots and do the thing with their controller and do all that kind of stuff. So it is fun to see in doing these kinds of benchmarks and putting it together and, and, and messing with it uh, at scale. So it's a lot of it's a lot of a, a lot of fun and a lot of interesting stuff. But I wanted to do this video not for the benchmarks, but to also say that like how the benchmarks work is changing, which I find interesting. And that's basically it. I bought this level one. It's been a quick look at the E1 version of the uh, D7 PS1010. Uh, I borrowed these from Solidime, and we are working on uh, upgrading uh, Oingo Gablogian, um, the, the AI model, and that is running on the GH200 currently, which I will have a full review of soon. And uh, yeah, that's some interesting stuff going on. All right, that's enough rambling. I'm signing out, and I'll see you later.